Previously on X-Men. Right now we have to be strong for the team. <gasps> for every mutant still out there who's watching these images. Why X -Men would we possibly believe a murdering eight. maniac Tolerance like you, Trask? He said nothing about Genosha. One. We see this episode starts with Cyclops and Jean talking about how well Cyclops and Cable is getting along. Cable gives a backstory of what happens when Bastion basically takes over the world and their uncertainty as to where Bastion comes from. The only thing that they found out was that Bastion had a particular coordinates of interest which turns out to be his home. So we have a fetch quest where the X-Men split up. Um, we still have Jubilee and Sunspot uh, visiting Sunspot's mother. And she's putting together a gala, or she's putting together a fundraiser for Genosha. And under her breath mentions that the X-Men, not like the X-Men, would be helping them. So they have to do it. Jubilee gets upset and says, let's go shopping. So she and Sunspot go shopping. Um, Beast and the reporter um, is standing over Trask's body when Beast is about to use Cerebro to find out how many Prime Sentinels there are. And the reporter turn into a Prime Sentinel and manhandles Beast. We see Beast, Wolverine, and Nightcrawler um, fighting the Prime Sentinels and Morph fighting the Prime Sentinels. Morph turns into Juggernaut. I like how they're treating Morph um, more useful than he was in the past, where he seems to get some of the natural strength or um, abilities of the people he turns into. Um, last week we saw him get some of the speed from Quicksilver, and this week we see him get some of the strength from Juggernaut, which is kind of cool to see. Um, after that, um, Nightcrawler tries to take, uh, everyone away from Rogue to keep her safe, and he, we see this rather cool shot of Wolverine being teleported by Nightcrawler, who's teleported in one of the Prime Sentinels. We see... We see Cyclops, uh, Jean, and... Cable um, running away from a whole bunch of Prime Sentinels. Bastion basically turned his entire town into Prime Sentinels. One downside I saw of this episode is all of the places that we are following, they're Prime Sentinels attacking. And so that means how many millions of Prime Sentinels were there? Or are all the Prime Sentinels around where our um, heroes were? I guess we may find out in the second episode of Tolerance's Extension. Um, so Magneto has been um, kept with a collar to keep his powers away, and we see the representative from the UN talking to him, saying that Bastion has mentioned that you haven't said anything for all this time. And uh, I think he decided that talking is futile, so what's the point in talking anymore? Um, she eventually re um, realizes that Magneto was right, that um, coexistence between mutants and humans is almost impossible, because in this time, in this case, the mutants actually were going for p the peaceful route and formed their own nation to live by themselves and be happy, and humans still attacked or it's perceived that humans still attacked. Um, turns out that the attack was done by Bastion and Mr. Sinister, but considering that no nation is actually willing to step up and help Genosha, um, just shows how futile the attempt of joining the nations of humans were. Uh, the representative from the UN frees Magneto, Magneto flies to the North Pole, it looks like, and releases an electromagnetic pulse. Um, that seems to depower all of the um, Prime Sentinels. This episode was pretty good. Um, I'd rate it probably a B plus. Um, I would rate last week's episode as a strong A minus. 
Uh, this episode was pretty good, but there weren't many stakes. Because, like, with the amounts of Prime Sentinels there were, it was a bit too many. Because um, there's no way the X-Men could defeat that many, because they could barely... They couldn't even hold their own against one. So there's no way they would have been able to defeat dozens of Prime Sentinels. So even though they tried to raise the stakes, um, it seems to have lowered it. It is curious, though, that if this is part one of three, what are they going to do for part two? Because in theory, Magneto has saved everybody. Um, but we will see. We will see. In the shot of the future, we see what appears to be Polaris doing something to the magnetic field of Earth. So it is possible that this is still turning out how um, it had in Cable's future, where um, Magneto did something to the magnetic field of Earth, and Polaris is trying to fix it. So we will see how this turns out next week. Thank you, and have a good day.